Hi friends, my name is Emma and let's talk spooky stuff. Welcome back to another monthly wrap up and it has been a long month for me. I have watched a lot this month so I'm very excited to dive in. But first I want to say if you have not checked out my paranormal activity video that just went up, you need to. It is a long video that has a lot of information about all of the films. I talk about the best scares in each film and I rank them from best to worst. I talk about all of the background and how they were put together. So please go check it out. I really enjoyed making it and I think a lot of you will really like it. It's a little bit longer, but I think that's kind of fun sometimes, right? <laughs> it's also a collab with Possessed by Horror. So yeah, check it out if you haven't. I've linked it down below as well. And another thing I wanted to link really quickly was my Does This Offend You episode with Vicky from Nightmare Maven. It was meant to be a live stream on my channel, but there was technical difficulties. So we moved it over to Vicky. So just in case, some of you were wondering where that went, I'll leave that linked down below as well. It's a really good episode if you are interested in Lords of Chaos and I will be talking about that a little bit for a reason later in this video. But I am very excited to get into everything I watched this month and talk about what I suggest to you and my thoughts on some films that I have not spoken about yet. A question I get quite often is how do I watch all of these movies? How do I find them, especially when I'm in Australia? Well, my secret is today's sponsor, which is my favorite VPN, it's Surfshark. Surfshark is a VPN which stands for Virtual Private Network. Not only do they encrypt all of your information and protect your identity online, they also unlock content on streaming services that you may not be able to access in your country. So say for example with Paranormal Activities, I watched all of them recently, they weren't all on Australia's Netflix. So I flicked a switch and all of a sudden I was in the United Kingdom where I was able to watch them via Netflix. I pay for Surfshark personally myself and I would not vouch for it if I did not think it was worth the money. It's been super convenient for me, especially in this time where we're getting a lot more VOD content instead of content in the cinema. I think it's really worthwhile in investing in something that you can trust to not only protect yourself, but also give you some more content. To unlock content now, go to Surfshark by using the link in the description and enter the code SPOOKY for 83% off and three months extra for free. Thank you again to Surfshark for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get into to Letterbox, I am dying to talk to you about some of the movies I have watched during November. Again, I'm using the app Letterbox. If you are curious, I've left the link in the description below. Let's go all the way down to the start of this month. Seriously, this is gonna be a long video. <laughs> At the start of the month, I actually had a Halloween hangout uh, with a bunch of my patrons. And uh, because it was the first for me, so it was the 31st for my friends in America, uh, we watched uh, 31 <laughs> to celebrate Halloween. I didn't like this as much as the first time I saw it. Uh, if you have not seen it, it's one of Rob Zombie's films. It's, you, I think if you, you love him, you love him. If you don't, I probably wouldn't bother, obviously. Um, it is about a bunch of carnival workers that get stuck in this madhouse and have to play this sick game with these clowns and it's it's a lot. Um, it's just carnage and grit and gore. Um, the soundtrack is amazing though. Highly recommend the soundtrack. I watched Pretty Persuasion. I feel like I'm not saying that right. I don't know why. You know when you say a word too many times? Anyway, this is very interesting, this film. Um, I watched it on Amazon Prime, and I'm sorry when you see all the ads on here. <laughs> I really need to pay for a premium subscription, I'm sorry. Um, so this is a very interesting film. It has uh, Evan Rachel Wood, Summer Blair, I forget Summer Blair was in it. Um, and it is, mm, <laughs> it's about a girl, I don't want to ruin it because it's, it's kind of interesting the way it unravels, but it's just about a really well-off privileged uh, girl in school. And it has like a little bit of Cruel Intention vibes. Um, and it's about her kind of um, messing with everyone around her. I don't want to give away too much because you, the reasonings and everything isn't clear at first. It's, it's quite interesting. Um, the film was quite annoying to watch because it was so overly, um, I mean, it's, it's a very, it's a big social commentary, I should say that. So, I mean, it's hard to watch these kind of situations with people being awful, uh, but it was, it was quite, yeah, it was still very interesting. So I probably would recommend it if you are into Cruel Intentions, um, into that kind of like social atmosphere that is a little bit weird and you like being um, kind of a fly on the wall, I definitely recommend that. I watched Yes God, Yes. Um, 
<laughs> I don't know, what's her name? She's from Stranger Things. Natalia Dyer, I think that's her. Um, so this is a funny film. Um, it's about a Christian girl who goes to like a, a camp, kind of like a Christian camp. I'm trying to say this in a PG friendly way, but pretty much it is about her going to this camp and um, her coming of age and you know, her feelings coming out as she turns into a woman <laughs> and, uh, you know, everyone there ignoring their true feelings. <laughs> That's a really bad way to say it. Maybe look up the blurb if it says it here on the blurb. I don't know. It's about a sexuality. I should say that. I'm, I'm, I think I'm allowed to say that. Um, but yeah, I thought it was interesting. It wasn't anything great, but, um, I kind of like those films. I love Saved, if you ever saw Saved with, um, Macaulay Culkin and, um, many more. I love that film. Um, so I watched Cadaver next, which is finally we're getting back into horror. Um, this is a Norwegian, I believe it was Norwegian, horror movie on Netflix. And uh, it's, I actually probably would recommend it to you guys. Um, I just haven't had a place to speak about it. I think everyone thought it was okay. You can kind of see here by uh, the people who watched it. Everyone thought it was, yeah, m you know, mid. Um, I think it's a really cool setup, but I don't think the uh, ending is anything great or anything really different. It's about a family that are living in the aftermath after a disaster in their city, in their home, and the rich invite them in for this dinner, and it's meant to be like this immersive play where they're a part of it, and it just becomes very sinister. It's a strange movie, like, it, I feel like the visuals were planned before the storyline, but I do think it's worth watching. Another film that everyone went nuts over, especially on Twitter, is His House, and I would highly recommend this film. I do think it's one of the better horror movies I've seen this year. It's on Netflix again, and this one is about a refugee couple that move to England, and they have to, you know, adjust to their new lifestyle and live in this house, and they are, yeah, kind of torn apart, uh, dealing with a lot of trauma based on their experiences and their past catching up with them and it is it doesn't go where I thought it would go it goes in a better direction I think it was an amazing moving film and I really recommend you, everyone watch this one I think that was really good highly recommend that one I watched Awoken oh yeah I forgot about this one god who 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 possessed me and made me watch this film <laughs> look at the poster um oh my gosh I really talk a lot about horror movie posters. Do you guys want me to do a video on horror movie posters and what attracts me and, <laughs> and makes me repel? <laughs> Please let me know. Anyway, uh, so this one is very interesting. Not really, actually. <laughs> it's about um, a medical student who has a brother who's dealing with this sleep illness. And um, <laughs> it doesn't make any sense, but she like transfers him to the basement of her university, if I've got that right. And then they try and do all of these like tests, but the person who's helping her has like sinister um, motives. I don't know. He's hiding something. It's really bad. Don't watch it. <laughs> don't bother. Another film I absolutely loved was 12 Hour Shift. I did talk about this in What's Coming Up on VOD this month. Um, I think it was for last month, but I finally got around to it. Angela Bettis back in action. And the storyline again for this one is not what I expected, which I think was really cool. Um, it is about a hospital and uh, this, uh, she is a medical worker there and her cousin Oh my lord, she would be the worst at Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> Try to get relevant throwing in Thanksgiving when I'm Australian. Anyway, uh, so she, uh, her cousin and her have this arrangement and she's kind of doing like this, what you would call like moonlighting, but uh, you know, in a bad way. She's doing some illegal things at her work um, to get some extra cash. And um, yeah, it doesn't go well because her cousin is an idiot and it, it just gets worse. It's kind of like a dark humor in the film because it's it's just you know when everything from goes from bad to worse really fast and it just can't be corrected so it's like watching these people stumble through it but at the same time quite bloody really well shot and um yeah I think it was great I really enjoyed it and I highly recommend it the next several are gonna be all films from when I talked about dark rituals if you do want to check out that video please do I spoke about 20 films about dark rituals so that includes the secret of harvest home, Skeleton Key, 
The Believers I did watch. A lot of people recommended this to me after I did the Dark Rituals, but I just didn't love it. I think I gave it a two and a half. Yeah, so I felt like I couldn't recommend it. Usually I try and recommend films that I would give a six or above um, in those videos because I don't want to just put everything on a list. I want to put things on the list that I would really recommend to someone. I was really interested in the star of this film. I thought the setup was great. It's got Martin Sheen in it and it's about a police psychologist who gets wrapped up in these ritualistic murders in New York. I believe it's in New York. Yeah, New York. Um, and she, he has his young son with him. And oh my God though, there's a scene at the start. I don't want to ruin it, but it's like one of the most intense uh, you know, in the, the start of some films, uh, where everything, uh, where there's an event, <laughs> I'm trying to say it without saying it, where there's an event and it's quite traumatic. And then like the rest of the film is them like dealing with that aftermath and how their lives have changed because of that, that happens in this film. And it's such a weird freak accident. And I think I, it's worth a watch for that scene alone, but the rest of it, I just feel like it starts off being super interesting and then just kind of goes exactly where you thought it would and there's no real kind of twist or nothing to really keep me engaged. Then I watched The Ritual and The Spell. Both of those were in my list of dark rituals. I watched In the Tall Grass. Uh, this is a rewatch. I watched this with my patrons. I do Netflix parties, so we, we all jumped on Netflix. I don't mind this film, but um, Patrick Wilson and the moustache, like, it just throws me off every time. Um, yeah, if you haven't seen it, it's based on a Stephen King, I believe it's novella? I don't think it's an actual um, book. It's about this tall grass that people kind of get lured into and then, you know, time and space and everything, it doesn't exist. It's kind of like House of Leaves. <laughs> um, I didn't mind it the first time I watched it. Second time, as you can see, I gave it two and a half. So it's kind of mid for me. I know a lot of people hated that film. I watched Rituals. I don't think, did I mention this one in my... I don't think I did in my 20 um, dark ritual um, video, but this one is, people call it, it's like the deliverance. I don't know if, I think it was before deliverance, but um, they, they call it like, it's very similar to deliverance where it's like a bunch of men go out into the woods and then, um, you know, evil takes hold or whatever you want to call it. But this one is very interesting because they save all of the actual horror for the last aspect, but everything else is like a survival film. I didn't mind it. I actually thought it was all right, but I don't know if I think it fit the um, ritual, the dark ritual aspect because the dark ritual in this wasn't really um, up to up to the level that I had hoped. Um, I watched Zombie Child, The Borderlands, The Serpent and the Rainbow, um, all of those for that same video. Although I watched The Borderlands, I was in the middle of watching it and I knew I'd seen it before. It's a film actually about an exorcism um, in a church, which is quite interesting. And I don't mind this film. I actually think it's kind of um, interesting and fun. Um, but <laughs> I thought that that was Borderland. <laughs> so I've, that's why I've seen The Borderlands and Borderland. But I do recommend uh, The Borderlands. Borderland uh, is another dark ritual film. And I think that's all of the dark rituals. Thank you for bearing with me. I watched Freaky, which I did do a review on me going to see that in the cinema. I did really enjoy that. Um, I didn't think it was anything new or groundbreaking, but I thought it was an interesting time. I watched Just Mercy uh, and I watched this with my partner and I thought that was a really well done film. Um, obviously when it's a true story that's just so heartbreaking like that, it, it makes sense. Um, it's about a guy that was um, put on death row that wasn't meant to be there and it's about the injustice in the system, um, which is why it's called Mercy. Uh, so yeah, I, I mean, I recommend it if you're into true crime, not true, it's not really true crime, but if you're into true stories um, and yeah, I don't know. It's kind of annoying at the same time because I personally don't believe capital punishment and um, yeah, so it's like, it's very jarring. Don't get me started. <laughs> um, I watched The Dark and The Wicked, which a lot of people have asked me about what I thought of this film. I did think it was great. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I gave it seven. So that's that's high for me. You guys know I'm a little bit of a, I like to stay in the sevens and the eights for like films that I really like. I reserve the nines and the tens for gold. <laughs> uh, but I thought that this film was really great. I thought that it was an interesting setup. It was very eerie. I really liked um, the, the natural, like the nature scenes and um, all of those scenes where they just go out and stand in the wilderness. I thought that was beautiful. Um, I loved all that aspect. I loved the the knife scene. 
There were so many good things in this film, but I do feel like it fell down a little bit because, and this is just my personal taste again coming in, uh, because of the special effects, I felt like it had such an eerie tension by itself, like that kind of the lodge hereditary feel. Obviously hereditary has some effects in there, but they're more like practical. Um, but I feel like they just try to shove I don't know, some like stereotypical stuff in there to be like, whoa, just in case you were wondering, this is a horror. <laughs> um, and that kind of let me down from being such a great film because I know a lot of people really enjoyed this one and I can see why. It's very sinister, quiet, and um, stirring. So if you're into that kind of film, I do recommend it. But yes, I was a little bit disappointed with how aggressive it got because the best thing it had going for it was how quiet and understated it was because there's nothing more sinister than a quiet farmhouse and then hearing a creak opposed to someone knocking on the door and then acting like a fool. I don't know. Does, does that make sense to you? This one is getting a lot of love right now um, and I can see why. So I do recommend checking it out. Um, I watched Images and Good Manners for a video I did recently, which was talking about good foreign film. I was blown away by that film Images. Um, I really should rate it higher. I'm, I probably will go back and rate it higher. And I really do still think about that film. I think it was just a beautiful, strange, surreal journey and it was it was quite haunting so I really recommend that one. I watched Good Manners which again I spoke about in that foreign film um, video but uh, again that's a Brazilian um, movie that is more like fantasy based and it's kind of like a child storybook and it is beautiful and um, I'm so glad I finally got around to watching it. If, uh, if you're into fantasy and beautiful storytelling Really, I really recommend checking that one out. Um, it was quite surprising. And again, it has special effects that I don't mind because the storyline is so enticing and it's such a journey where it starts one place and ends somewhere completely different. The next film I watched is Mary Lou Prom Night 2, which, does that rhyme or is it just me? Um, I watched this with my patrons. They chose it. What a, what a ride. Um, I don't even really remember Prom Night 1. I have seen it before. Um, but this isn't a film I'd normally seek out, and that's what I like about doing my Patreon hangouts. I like uh, getting out of my comfort zone and watching especially a lot of 80s films we tend to watch. Um, and this one is a trip. If you haven't seen it, the horse scene sends me not to good places. <laughs> um, it is just, it's like a ripoff of like Carrie and I mean a lot of 80s kind of movies, but mainly Carrie. Um, and it's cheesy and odd and hypersexualized. And if you're into cheesy 80s, you definitely need to check it out. I then watched this film. I don't know how to pronounce it. It was recommended to me as a uh, one of uh, my for 13 days of horror. I loved the start, but it just kind of, again, didn't go anywhere, fizzled out really early. It's about a bunch of film students. Are they film students? Yeah, they are. Um, oh, they're just students. I don't know what they what they were studying, but they went into this mental facility and um, they find this, well, they, you know, they plan to talk to this woman who was involved in this incident in their town and um, yeah, they try and find out answers and parts of this film were really terrifying, don't get me wrong, I actually think it's quite a good film, but um, the parts that weren't really evened it back out, but uh, I do think it's quite a unique and um, original film, and so I don't I don't regret watching it at all. Um, I then watched The Psychic, which is my new favorite Giallo film. <laughs> Again, I spoke about that one in the foreign horror film um, video I did, which I also spoke about The Baby's Room and Sputnik, which I always thought was Sputnik but it depends what country you're in. Who knew that? Um, and then, of course, I watched all of my uh, Lords of Chaos content. So I watched Until the Light Takes Us, which this is the second time I watched this documentary. I actually rated it lower this time. I I mean, I'll get into my what I read this month later, but um, there's a reason for this. Um, I then watched Metalhead, which is a Norwegian film. Um, this is part of my Does This Offend You films that we watched and spoke about. And this is about a, a, a woman who... Uh, deals with grief in her life and she turns to metal and um, the effects that has on her and um, her social circle and her family. It's a nice film. It's a heartwarming film, which you wouldn't think of when you look at the cover. Like you would assume <laughs> it's got more going on, but oh my God, that Norwegian like tonal, like the coldness and the, the mountains. Oh my God, I can't. It's beautiful. Um, and Lords of Chaos, rewatch this film. I feel like knowing <laughs> everything I know now, 
it it gives me such a different way to pick apart the film and I can understand people who are really into the story before the film came out uh, would have seen it completely different way. But I still love the way this film was put together. I still think it's an awesome way to tell the story, even though obviously it uses liberties, but that's the creative license it has and it, it you know, it gives you the whole disclaimer on that. And then I watched all of the paranormal activities. Um, and fun fact, I watched paranormal, sorry, we'll skip ahead a little bit. I did watch Run. I did a video on that. If you do want to check it out and hear all of my thoughts, I have a whole video dedicated to watching that. Um, and as you can see, I watched paranormal one, paranormal two, paranormal three, paranormal four, the ghost dimension, and then the marked ones. I actually switched them. I didn't even realize till afterwards that the fifth was a sixth, but you can watch them either way around. It doesn't really matter to be honest. Um, but in between that, I watched Stage Fright Aquarius. I can't believe I gave this one and a half. That's so harsh. Um, I watched this again as one of my Patreon hangouts. If you do want to be part of my Patreon, we watch two movies every month. We do a Netflix hangout, which is open to all tiers, usually once a month. And I do bonus content every single week. So, um, I'll I'll tell you about what I did this week shortly but if you do the link is always in the down bar if you do want to support me I would greatly appreciate it it's quite cheap it's two dollars a month to get a bonus video uh, every week so we watched stage fright Aquarius I had only seen the remake and the original is very slow it has some cool kills but oh my god the towards the end of the film things just get very confusing it's a very straightforward slow moving story until the end and it's just I don't want to say it has to be seen to be believed because I don't really recommend this film, uh, but I'm glad I watched it. Another film that I'm glad I watched, I really want to re-watch the remake. Um, let me know if you guys have seen Stage Fright, the recent one. I actually, I really enjoyed that. Um, it has meatloaf in it too. Um, I watched Misbehavior. I was invited to go see this uh, at a local cinema um, for the premiere here. And that is a film starring Kira Knightley. And it's a true story, which I never knew. It was about the Miss World pageant in 1970 and um, the feminist who came on and, you know, completely destroyed that. And they like sit in the crowd and they are... Oh, yeah, it's really interesting. And what I liked about the film is it doesn't show everything in black and white, which I think is quite important in um, these kind of topics. And it does talk about intersectional feminism, which I think is quite important. Um, so yeah, I mean, I don't think that this film was actually done that great though. I think it's a great story. Uh, but I think it was kind of basic. <laughs> they show them like getting the idea to do it, making some signs, montage, montage there at the event. So I don't feel like the progression was good, but the story it was based on was interesting to learn about. I then watched Happiest Season. I was so glad because again, I was invited to go see this. So I'm, yeah, I was so stoked with this. We're lucky here that we can go see it at the cinema, but I believe in most countries, you can just rent it at the moment. Um, and it is such a joy. I'm sure you know about it by now, but it's about Kristen Stewart and her girlfriend and they go home for the holiday season. And on the car ride home, her girlfriend tells her that she is not out. And you know, then chaos ensues. And it is about more than just their relationship. It's about family. It's about all different things and being your authentic self. And it is just a joy. And I'm so glad that everyone is loving it. The last film I watched this month <laughs> is very interesting. So I told you I would tell you about my bonus that I did uh, this week for my patrons. Sorry, this is not meant to be a plug. It's just, I do a lot to do with that during my month and what I watch has a lot to do with my patrons. Um, I watched Twilight. I have never seen Twilight before until I watched it last night. And I watched this because they, they requested, it was highly requested for me to do an audio commentary. So me talking about watching the film as I'm watching it. And then I, I gave it to everyone to <laughs> watch along later. And I was so surprised by this film. It is not what I expected at all. I heard about it, you know, obviously this is a huge cultural phenomenon and I just never got onto it. I don't know why, it just never happened for me. And now it's happened and it's a very interesting moment. <laughs> It's a growing situation. I will say the scenery, top notch. I did not know it was set in Washington. So I was very happy with that. I love that kind of gloomy, you know, atmosphere. Um, and the running scenes were just a little bit too much for me. <laughs> Twilight is a trip. <laughs> so for this month, I would say probably recommend watching Paranormal 1 and 2 if you haven't. Watch Run and let me know what you think. Happiest season, definitely for those who are into Christmas movies. Laws of Chaos, as always. Um, Sputnik, 
I do recommend The Psychic. I highly recommend Good Manners. I highly recommend Images is a great 70s flick if you're into 70s surrealism. Please watch that. The Dark and the Wicked, I definitely recommend because a lot of people have been loving that. Freaky, when you get the chance, don't run out to watch it, but when you get the chance, I think it's worth your time. I think check out my video about the 20 ritual films if you want to run down on all of these because I think they're suited to different tastes. 12 Hour Shift, yes, do it. <laughs> His House, absolutely, put that at the top of your list. And maybe Cadaver if you're looking for something easy to watch on Netflix. Let's move on to TV. I watched two shows this month where well, I started one and I finished another one. The first one was Dark Tourist. I don't know why it took me so long to watch this TV series and I absolutely loved it. Um, I fell in love with the host even though everyone says he's like a Louis <laughs> ripoff but I love him and he's from New Zealand so I really appreciate that. Uh, it is a TV show on Netflix about um, a guy who travels around the world and looks at dark tourism. So that can be like violent play Places, abandoned places, uh, places connected to, you know, dark history, um, and then also, you know, like ritualistic stuff. And I feel like I learned a lot from this series and it really opened my eyes back up. Obviously, with the world being how it is, I'm not going to be able to travel in a little bit and I love traveling. So it was really interesting to look at it through his eyes. And he is so um, transparent, which I really, really love. It wasn't like, because obviously when I think about this kind of stuff, I have a background in TV and especially in, uh, I worked on a couple of travel shows and I always think about how they would do the sponsorships and ask to, you know, get permission to film. And sometimes he goes to these certain places and he just <laughs> rips them to shreds about what they're actually doing and why it's harmful. And I, I just keep thinking, how does he do that? How does he like have the kahunas to <laughs> do that? Um, and yeah, I just think it's really impressive but also he is um, super open to other cultures and learning about stuff. I love the episode in Indonesia. I thought that was really interesting. There is a lot of animal um, slaughter in this series, unfortunately. It's true life though, you know, it's about rituals and sacrifices um, and they explain all of that and I think... Um, a lot of people would find that really hard to watch and uh, I, I think it's quite humbling to watch because it is realistic and it's not turning, you know, a blind eye to this kind of situation. Um, and I think you just need to watch it and make up your own mind. But I think that the way they present it is really honest and authentic. And I just love the TV series. I'm so sad it's over. I really wanted a season two, which obviously is not going to happen anytime soon. But if you have been putting it off, it really is, when they say dark tourism, it really is. And uh, it's, the, it's just fascinating. I just thought it was so fascinating, especially when he went to that country and, um, Oh my God, it was like, it was like Korea and it was, yeah, I was blown away by the stuff he saw. I thought it was just going to be the normal stuff, like, you know, the Japanese forest, which he does go to, but he really does cover an array of things that I'd never heard about. So yeah, highly recommend that. And the other TV show I watched was Schitt's Creek. I've almost finished the first season. Everyone in my life has been screaming about this show, especially everyone online. I know how much it's meant to a lot of people during lockdown, but I never got into it. It's not my kind of comedy, uh, but a lot of people say season two is where it gets good. So I'm willing to hang out for that, especially because it's really easy to watch in the background. It's only 20 minute episodes. So I've been able to chuck that on and do a couple of things if I need to do on my phone while still paying complete attention because it's such a straightforward storyline. But I'm really looking forward to getting into season two. And there's a couple of character developments that I'm, I'm really enjoying so far so we will see fingers crossed the last thing I want to talk to you about before I go today is books I read the Lords of Chaos book and it changed my life <laughs> um, actually Vicky from Nightmare Maven and I both read this book um, in research for the does this offend you episode that I spoke about earlier um, and the book is amazing so I didn't know this I knew it was based on a book the movie which is quite controversial so the movie is actually based if you want this explanation I think it's quite important the movie is actually based on the book and the book is non-fiction. So the book is interviews and um, information about um, Norway and their culture, everything that Norwegian black metal was founded on and the ideas behind them and all of the different roots and the reason why people act the way they do, gatekeepery or <laughs> whatever you want to call it, within the black uh, metal scene or even within metal, like I feel like it's trickled down. It talks about everything from fans being influenced by what happened right down to 
yeah, as I said, um, Norway and its roots and um, different gods and all this kind of stuff. Like it really breaks, it has just so much information and I thought it was totally fascinating. And um, I highly recommend that book. You can get the audiobook for it. Um, so I highly recommend that. It was just, it was amazing. And I really enjoyed that process of learning. I, I felt like I was really into it. I was making notes the whole time. And it got me back into like the idea of learning. And I hope in the future to do a lot more deep dives and research like that because I just found it really fun to get back into and learn for myself. And I actually took that method and applied it to my paranormal activity video that I did recently. And that's why I want you guys to watch it because I really did a lot of research for it and really poured my heart and soul. <laughs> Usually I watch, you know, 30, 40 movies and decide what's good to recommend to you. But I want that balance, to be completely honest with you, I want that balance of a lot of information because I want to make my channel something that is I'm giving you information not just entertainment you're you're getting something out of it that you can that's tangible and you can take away sorry this has been such a rant so i want to make it you know half half i want to make it all fun recommendations where you get to go out and find out for yourself if you love that film spoiler free kind of information but then also i want to do deep dives again and really get into that i have some great ideas coming up so if you haven't subscribed please do i do two videos every single week talking about horror movies and thriller movies giving you a lot of recommendations and adding a lot of films to your watch list. I want to thank today's sponsor Surfshark for supporting me. It really does mean a lot to get support from sponsors during this time and I hope you're all having a great day. I'll talk to you very soon. My next video is going to be what's coming up on VOD in December so I'm very excited to share that with you and talk about some new movies. I'll see you very soon. Stay spooky friends. Bye.